2.47 a.m. Always the same time. I shouldn't take those damn pills again. Uh, maybe I'll go to bed and give the sleep thing one more shot. I swear that shadow just moved. It's freaking me out. Girl, get a grip. The door's locked tight, and you're home alone. A hot shower. That'll create the magic of sleep.
There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. Mr. Mars! Mr. Mars! Mr. A few Mars. words! Mr. Mars! Goddamn reporters. They've been camped outside my house all day.
I could go through the neighbor's garden and avoid all the press. Gonna, gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't, can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people. Jason! Dad! Jason! Dad! Jason! Dad! Jason! Jason! Dad! Jason!
Line 18, box number 3. I took a room in the first motel I saw. Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. Dad. Dad.
The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square miles. Oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your vast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? I came here to find a killer. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. With or without your Fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's enough! You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I had come to Earth to persecute him. Real twisted.
Nathaniel Williams is our prime suspect. He's already been questioned, and he lives in the exact geoprofiling zone. Well, no warrant, no problem for Blake. He thinks his badge entitles him to do whatever he wants. All the signs of a mystical obsessive neurosis compounded by a persecution complex. You don't have to be a profiler to see he's not a killer. We're wasting our time here. It's stifling in here. Those windows haven't been opened in years. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. Why all the crucifixes? Are you afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. Where do you work, Nathaniel? Do you have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? Blake, what are you doing? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders you to go and find new prey, doesn't he? He needs more and Maybe more. Maybe Blake knows what he's doing after all. No. I gotta stop Blake. He's no. going too far. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. I've got to he do told something. You to go and find that kid in the park. The voice has tormented you. What's all Blake night looking for? Long. You wanted Why is he pushing to him stop, over the edge? didn't you, Nathaniel? Shit! Stop. Blake is totally out of his stop. mind. I can't That's just stand enough. around and do nothing. So you obeyed them to make them stop. That's you took enough. That boy with Leave you and him alone. Him. Isn't that right? Oh. No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you going to confess, you bastard? Ooh. You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I shall you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sake, shoot! Drop the gun, now! I... I shot him. Yep, looks like you did. Can't say I'll miss him. <laughs> Come on, let's go.
No answer. Baby screaming inside. Not a promising start. Mrs. Bowles? Anybody home? Hello, little cutie. Who? You looking for your mama? Oh, Jesus. First, I gotta find Mama. Slap her. Holy fuck. I hope she... I hope she hasn't... Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. Mrs. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, are you there? Oh, shit. Mrs. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Wake up! I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this wound with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. She should have some bandages in the bathroom. Quick, she's losing blood. I gotta hurry. Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. Ah, oh, I need more. It's still bleeding. Not perfect, but it'll do. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily the wounds aren't too deep. Hey. How are you feeling? You okay? My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> 
is Emily. Gotcha. I was a private eye when I walked in here, and now I'm a babysitter. Go figure. Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh! Going by the smell? I got a pretty good idea. Okay. How do you do this again? There you go, fresh new baby. <laughs> that should feel better. Right, Emily? Hmm? Hey, what's the matter? I thought we solved the problem. Maybe she's hungry. I guess I better warm this thing up. Oh, Emily, are you hungry? Huh? You hold on. I'll just tilt this bottle a little bit so you don't choke. Okay. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Okay, all right. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. I can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. 
I don't know what happened to him. Maybe... Maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own and... I couldn't do it anymore. I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and... There was just the cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah, my mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself and Emily. I will, I promise. Good luck, Emily. You take care of your mama. Excuse me? Hey! Oh! Huh! Sorry. Didn't see you. Uh, what can I do you for? I'd like to get... my car. Hey, you're a pretty patient guy, you are. Have that I been car's been there for two years. Don't remember it. We took it out for a drive every month and check the tires and batteries, just Sean's like you said. Exhausted. But at least he's alive. Here, 
It's the third floor down. Thanks. The service elevator is at the far. Ah, you have yourself a good one, Chief. Car's been here for two years. What does that mean? Elevator at the back of the garage, third floor. Got it. Your destination is four miles from here. Leave the parking lot and take the first right. have reached your destination. Are you ready to show your courage in order to save your son? Listen carefully. Take the highway and drive against the traffic for five miles. If you haven't reached your destination in five minutes, you will have failed. If I succeed, I'll get more letters for the hangar. It's my only need. No turning back now. Stop my hands shaking. I'm not going to make it. I'm I'm not gonna make it. I can do it. I'd do anything to save my son. A lot of good it'll do Sean if I kill myself on this highway. Go the wrong way on the highway for five miles? Am I willing to take that risk in order to save my son? I've got to do it, for Sean's sake. I have no choice. Come on! 
more miles to go before you reach your destination.
The reception. The here is one of Let's hope they've got a room left. Still no news of ten-year-old Sean Mars, who disappeared yesterday. A recent report indicates. Hello there, sweetheart. What can I do for you? I'd like a room. For you, anything. Hmm. Feeling the register. Madison Page twenty seven single. How long will you be staying with us, Ms. Page? I don't know yet. Room 201. Last floor, stairs on the right, in the courtyard. Thanks. The pleasure was all mine. That's for sure. Room 201. Stairs on the right, last floor. That obnoxious receptionist better not have a spare key to my room. The thought of it leaves me in a cold sweat. Sir? Are you all right? I'll call an ambulance. No ambulance. You're badly hurt. You need a doctor. Please, just help me to my room. It's number 207. Have you got the key? You're really in bad shape. You should see a doctor. Must have one, maybe two broken ribs. It's not fatal. <laughs> but it's sore as hell. <sighs> Your head is bleeding. It looks deep. I should disinfect his cuts. He's in trouble. I can't just walk away and leave him like that.
paraphenol anti-fever. Administer only in cases of high fever. I'll help him first and ask questions later. Paracamol painkiller. Administer in cases of intense pain. Do not take more than one pill every 24 hours. Here. Take this. It should do you what some good. It? It's a painkiller. It'll help reduce the pain. It says on the box to take one every 24 hours. I don't think it's a good idea to exceed the dose. I can't afford to wait. I should disinfect his cuts. I'm going to disinfect your wound. This might hurt a little. There. At least it won't get infected. Thanks. I wouldn't move around for a few days if I were you. I... I'm going to take a shower. All right. Let me help you. I'll wait here until you come out. Let me know if you need anything. Talk to me. That way I'll know if you pass out. What's your name? Madison. Are you staying in the hotel? No, I live in town. I suffer from chronic insomnia. I seem to only be able to sleep in motels. Don't ask me why. Whenever I get too exhausted, I, uh, I come and spend a night here. I'm... I'm just passing through. And what else do you do, Madison? Apart from fixing up strangers. I'm a photographer. I take pictures of uh, furniture for fashionable design magazines. And you? I... I'm an architect. Thanks for staying. I feel a lot better now. Okay. I better get going then. By the way, you never told me your name. Ethan. Be careful, Ethan.